Happy Friday and welcome to the weekly recap. This is episode number 108. Oh my goodness, what a busy week. Maddie, how are you doing today? Hey Rick, hello community. I am doing well. As I was commenting earlier when we, we discussed, um, I feel like spring is in the air in Romania. Uh, it's a very warm and sunny day in here. And uh, how's the weather in uh, in Ohio, in Columbus for you? We had a very spring-like day yesterday as well. It was quite windy, but like, oh, I had to use my sunglasses and everything. It was really nice, but I had to work because <laughs> it's been um, it's been rather busy. I don't know if you've heard that phrase. Oh, summer was yesterday, but I had to work. Type of thing. <laughs> that yeah, was yesterday. <laughs> from, yeah, so I felt like that. But um, now nah, spring is in the air. Love is in the air. We had a lot going on this week with Valentine's Day, and I think it was pretty visible in the community, too. It was absolutely. I was checking the social media and our community shared all that event. I think it was very well received, honestly. But how do you feel now that V12 launch is over and you have to go to Veeam on preparation? Uh, how do you feel yeah. about that? So on the product team, product strategy team in particular, um, I've always told people, I think I told you this, Maddie, there are really three things that are the most intensive per year. A product launch, Vmon and then our Vm100 summit. Those are really the, the biggest burdens that go on our our shoulders. And so, yes, we did just go through one of them, and we're immediately going to flip the page to the next one and the Vmon preps. But I am just so happy that this is out. The uh, it's like uh, you know we go th we've gone through this a couple of times at Vm where we like have these longer promotional cycles for a product. This one is just so big. I'm so glad V12's out. I, I'm upgrading all my environments as we're speaking now, and so uh, everybody seems pretty happy. But yeah, I'm just glad it's launched. But then I know that it's going to then turn to the very next, you know, thing, Vmon. Yeah, absolutely. But we have a lot of uh, things about V12 to discuss today. Uh, so why don't we just start yeah. with the first article? Yeah, let's get into it. And um, I was talking with Maddie on this and OK, I don't think we're officially breaking the rule, but we don't quite have like 12 special department items either. We've got a lot of content to share today, but let's start with our first kind of real three pieces. And the first one is from Kirsten, who's talking about some of the new reporting capabilities in Veeam 1. Yes, Kirsten is uh, discussing the importance of the three to one rule, as well as the fact that, you know, adding a copy of data uh, that is offline or immutable, uh, like uh, it helps any business to ensure that at least one copy is locked from being changed or deleted. But is that really enough uh, to keep your data safe? And then she's also bringing to, to our attention that we could go further and add the monitoring data protection um, as well as uh, she uh, she talks about uh, monitoring your backups and ensure you're meeting SLAs uh, and then obviously be proactive in uh, in the issue resolution. Um, so she's presenting further on the, the Veeam one, one as the ultimate tool for monitoring Veeam data protection uh, operations. And then she's talking about, as you said, uh, a new immutable workloads report and immutable alarms. So what can you tell us, Rick, about these uh, two new features? Yeah, so she's really hitting on one of the kind of favorite things we've been storytelling here at Veeam. It's around Veeam 1. And these new immutable workloads reports and the enhancements for the alarms and stuff, they're a big deal because you've got to have that kind of widespread view that you have everything immutable uh, in the sense of I've been working with a lot of Veeam environments for a long time. There might be some non-immutable backup targets in there, and that might be kind of how some organizations have built the 321 rule. But just to really know that everything has at least one copy immutable, which is the spirit of this report, that's really valuable in my opinion. So thank you so much for sharing, Kirsten. Now, this might be a new one. 
a key? I a think co- so. A, a qua- I, I don't know how a- to pronounce that. Aquas? I'll just go with aquas. Aquas, I would say. But it's a, it's a, yeah. yeah, it's a question that got some attraction here on the group managed service accounts. This is a good one. Well, as I told you, I want to also get some conversations from our discussion boards to bring it in uh, in the recaps because I feel like we kind of um, put our attention more in the blogs and podcasts uh, as well as the VUG, maybe the scripts lately, but uh, we left behind the discussion board. So it's time to go in there as well. and. Uh, and bring it to people's attention because I feel like there, for instance, uh, this, this uh, question that Aquaites, let's say, uh, asked in the discussion boards is is pretty interesting, and I feel like it brought a lot of uh, discussion around it. Um, he had some trouble with the group managed service account uh, feature in B12. Uh, it seems like he was not able to see the GMSA as an option for linking to a physical agent job within the V12. And um, yeah, the community members jumped into this and tried to help him. And Fabian said it's not available for managing Vim agent, uh, but it looks like Aquas feels like this is not the right approach. Uh, what is your takeaway in here? And uh, he's asking as well, can you provide documentation on Veeam agents not storing passwords? Uh, and I was uh, thinking, do we have any documentation for that that we could maybe share with him? Um, well, so this is a good question, first of all. And you know, if I was to break down something like group managed service accounts or any new capability, there's always like uh, like a like a scope. You know, mm-hmm. the thought is we could support it across everything, but that raises the QA scope, right? So whenever Veeam does something like this, and if the the heart of it would start with Veeam backup and replication for like the the guest processing, which is what the group managed support service. Uh, will uh, group managed service account support will be in this release as it's been uh, done so far, it's reasonable to expect we'll then expand that support elsewhere, right? Mm-hmm. So there, there's a lot that goes into that type of um, once we do something in one place, we'll take it to other. The best example I can give you, Maddie and, and Aqua, for Aqua, 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 Aquas for this question is kind of look at some of the Linux things that we've done. You know, okay. way way back when we had the Linux agent, then we had a Linux proxy, then we had the Linux repository logic, then we had NFS repositories, then we just now had the Linux CDP proxy, and then with V12 we have Postgres database support, which can be external. So all of those are are this progressive journey, and that's just one example of things processing like that. Um, as to the why and the details uh, for you know some of this stuff i'll probably pipe in an answer here later but now good thread good uh good ask and honestly this is the type of stuff that we want to see the interest to then justify the prioritization later for additional support yep so i'll give, totally. I'll give, you, a, give you a like for that <laughs> um yeah good one next up comes from captain chris well, not really, Captain. It just rolls off the tongue nice. Chris Arsenu has a share here that he has recently updated the Ansible, um, I forget what they're called, a playlist. I'm not quite sure if that's the right object name. I think he calls it the collection. It's like a collection. That, that's collection, it. yeah, to yep. automate Veeam uh, deployments. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, he's focusing this time on V12 solutions for VBR Enterprise Manager and One. So I think it's a great collection in there. Um, I I think for anyone that is going to use V12, and I believe everyone is going to use, I think this is going to uh, to help automate some of some of the work in there. So. Yeah, uh, no, I think this is good. This was a good um, update. I think this is one of those automation platforms if that's the right word that is one of the most popular ones right i'll I'll say that 
Um, Ansible, I myself haven't played with. I kind of like what mm -hmm. Lewis is doing with Chocolatey, right? That's an easy one for me to mm -hmm. do in Box Starter. But like this one here is for people that are really on like multiple large scale deployments, this is the way to go. And uh, Chris is one of our architects. Um, I'll give you a little shout out here, Chris. I asked uh, one of the, um, uh, the management team, I'm like, who's our best automation? And without a doubt, they just threw Chris's name out. Okay. So Chris is Chris is a sharp one. So thank you so much for getting that Ansible maybe, collection updated. Maybe we should have Chris uh, doing a demo with all this on one of our events. That would be great oh. and very useful as well for everyone. So I'm really thinking about that. We're going to have Ed for sure, uh, but that's going to be a different subject in there. And that's you know, nice. Chris, yeah, that'll yeah. actually, that'll earn you Veeam MVP points too. Uh -huh. I'm pretty sure uh -huh. Hannes will score that. Absolutely. So yeah. Good stuff. Thanks for sharing, Chris. All right. So that officially is the three contents to share, but now the academic debate on if we're breaking the rule of special department, we're going to go into that. And first thing up is I didn't even know that we could do this on the community hub, but Sophia and Maddie found a way to kind of make the community hub discussion board be pretty sticky and we had some really good engagement. I would actually like to ask our community what do they think about that yeah. top header in there? Do they think like it's useful? I saw a lot of engagement and I saw a lot of views uh, coming uh, to, to this discussion since we posted it in the top header. So I would be really interested to to figure to find out uh, our members opinion. Yeah, on it. do we like it sitting up there kind of sticky at the top like that of sorts is does that, you know, make it immediately pop? And now one thing I'll tell you, Maddie, that I like is that it's visible on all the all the pages, right? You don't have to be just at the at the main top page to see it like some of the other things that we've done here with with the v12 stuff right yeah this works on every page so you've got a really good point there so props you and sophia for figuring that out but uh sophia launched the discussion board and i think it went really good yeah absolutely and if you haven't joined the discussion yet just please feel um free to go and comment in there i think it's a it's a great way to um to share your point of view related to the V12 launch, the V12 features. So uh, just engage with us and give your uh, feedback. And actually I have a question as well. So let us know in the comments of this post what you all think about this featured topic type logic up here. But I, I also, I put a question out here that uh, it was actually one of the last of the first page now that I think about it. I said to the group, <laughs> I'll do it now. I need an opinion. When I do my Zoom it, is mm -hmm. that a yay or a nay thing? Because what I'm getting at is I'm about ready to require everybody to learn how to do Zoom it. Okay. Does it help with the demos? And, and the reason why I ask is this is a good example, a bad picture of me, but. Um, you know, when they have a like maybe a camera shot and then they have this and then they have the frame all the way around, you kind of run out of real estate, right, on some of these things. So I guess my question to you also watching the video is should we do Zoom it, right? And we get a couple more responses here. That's nice. This is a good one. This uh, Frank, here you go. You answered the question as asked. That'll give you a like. But uh, really good, really good uh, information here. So thank you for setting this up, Sophia. I think this is a we, every time we have like a vmon thread uh, we're going to have a vmon update this year any launch event anything that's like big and impactful i think we should put this featured topic like that that's cool yeah absolutely we should do that all right and uh actually i'll tell you some of you may have noticed but we had these both sophia's launch discussion uh the the launch event hub discussion board and the next thing I'm going to talk about. We started doing something where we stage them up and hide them. So you guys are not seeing an error um, when we have you might have you might have seen what's that as related, you know, those types of things. We we have this new special place that we're 
kind of getting stuff ready for big things like that. So uh, example, this thing, which I'll talk about now. It we're recording today on Thursday. But or sorry, yeah, we're recording on Thursday, but it said it was published five days ago. But wait, just Tuesday was the launch, right? We have this ability to kind of put stuff and hide it before we go live, and that's what that is. So um, we're not doing magic of television stuff, but we, we found a new way to kind of help us get stuff ready before it's time. Which leads me to the next topic, the V12 Upgrade Center. So this was a really popular one last year. I made a lot of effort to have this on public on the GA day, and, and it was ready before the stream of the launch event. But this is a really good one, Maddie. I know I put a, lo a lot of work onto it. I talked to a lot of what people. Should we, Rick, what should we yeah. expect from this center? I mean, I don't know. Maybe there are not there oh, are people cool. in the community that yeah. are not familiar with this uh, V12 center. So yeah, so let me explain the nature of what the upgrade center is. I product major product releases are a lot of work, right? And for our customers, I want to make it as easy as possible. The The reality is there's a lot of places you have to go. You have to go to the documentation. You have to go to the downloads. You have to go uh, to your licensing portal. All these different things, these different things maybe to, to get started. Somebody might not need to go to the licensing portal. Some may, that type of thing. But I talked to our support team because the the releases are a lot and mm -hmm. the number uh, over the years, the number one and the number two, and, and they've changed recently because the universal license, which is a good thing, but they used to back and forth. These were always the top two support cases that weren't really a problem, meaning XYZ broke, but the number one was, okay, how do I upgrade? And then number two was, OK, how do I get my new license for the new version? So my thought here is I wanted the Upgrade Center as a resource to kind of not just answer those two questions, but also kind of put all the links of all the different resources in one place. And so I've done that with what I call the pre-installation section. And you'll see I got some links here to the what's new, the release notes, user guide, that type of stuff. And then some information on the licensing. The universal license is our best friend here because it works for V10, it works for V11, and it works for V12. And then I really wanted to go into some of the, the areas that you might get a surprise with, and this is really important. So I talked about NAS backup. I talk about there's a deprecated thing around rollback uh, chains. And then very, very important, if you're a service provider customer, you can't upgrade until you know that the service provider is updated. You know, um, the cloud plugins, the orchestrator, you know, I talk about all these different things with the products and then we go into, OK, let's go ahead and upgrade and then what to do before, right? You know, get the con credentials for your Veeam hardened repository, ensure your configuration backups are done those types of things and then most important in support was really adamant about this first things you upgrade are enterprise manager and veeam one the second thing you upgrade is veeam backup and replication and then you're ready at the last point to do components like proxies and your agent type upgrades right and i'm still loving my zoom it so that mm -hmm. is what the the nature of the upgrade center is and then Kirsten did a video on how to upgrade Veeam 1 to version 12. I did a video of upgrading Enterprise Manager to V12. And later today, I'm going to do backup and replication and some component type upgrades and agents, right? So as the week goes, you'll see four videos or so. But that is the, and I want to walk people through it. And the number one thing that I do when I do the videos is I give them a, a good estimate of how long it will take so that mm -hmm. when you as the reader go through to your organization it's like hey i'd like to upgrade to v12 um, it's going to take about this long based on what i'm seeing that type of thing and you know add some time but it's really practical information maddie for those yeah who no products. it seems like and i'm pretty sure everyone is going to appreciate uh, this space dedicated to 
uh, to the upgrade, uh, the 12th upgrade center. And also, like, I'm pretty sure everyone is now going to appreciate all this explanation, uh, especially the people that were not familiar with what uh, this center is all about. So that makes yeah. it clear. And uh, now they can go and use it uh, for the purpose it was created. Yep, yep. And um, this was really kind of the step after the the news hub that we had you know leading up to it right so the news hub was all the stuff promotional which i should probably unsticky that and then you know just focus on the upgrade center which leads us to vm joe sneaking in here to the recap of special department uh he has things to consider before you install or upgrade the v12 so Joe is one of our architects and one of the, the, the top teams uh, based in Texas. And I really like, he's got a lot of this stuff as well. So really similar in, in you know, some of the thoughts, a little bit more explanation, which I'll give Joe mm -hmm. a hat tip there. He's explaining a little bit more, but then he's also going into how to set up and start using the new features. So big thank you here, Joe. Uh, yeah, going into some of these uh, storage optimization settings, which make a big deal as well. Um, so I think this is a really good kind of after, you, you know, you decide to go through your 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 project. I'm going to put some of the links to this over in the upgrade center. So thanks for sharing, Joe. Thank you, Joe. All right. No more V12 at least for <laughs> today's episode we'll talk about you know one of the softer side of life things and you know so first of all we have an event coming up with cassandra who's one of the uh, staff in the cast in cloud native world what is all this maddie this one just came up yeah so uh this seminar this webinar is going to um, it sounds first of all it sounds very fancy neurodiversity and product Activity survival guide. Um, and this is not organized by us, I must say that. So it's going to be on a different platform that we usually use. Uh, there is a link in there. Uh, you might want to open it and show it uh, because people might ask this question. Um, but if you are interested in finding out more about promoting a supportive environment for tech professional worldwide, I would suggest to just join um, Cassandra next week. I believe the event is going to be on Tuesday and you can register. Uh, we post it in here for our community, but you will have to register actually on the other uh, websites, on not platform, on our, build, yes, on build exactly. Stuff. On that platform, not on our platform, just uh, for you to know. Um, because you might miss it if you don't do it in here. I think you have also uh, the possibility to add it to your calendar if you uh, not not through here, but through uh, that platform. Yeah, um, if yeah, you it, do it. yeah. This is a bit different than than what we usually do. So yeah, Got it. but I feel like it's going to be interesting. We also going to have Cassandra at some point invited to uh, to the Kubernetes corner. So uh, she's going to to do like a show with uh, with our leader in there, Jeff. So I'm looking forward to that as well. That's going to be more dedicated to uh, to Kasten, to learning tools. So yeah, that's going to be an interesting one. But in the meantime, just uh, go and join Cassandra for this event. Yeah, yeah, no, this is good stuff. And Cassandra started in des late December of last year. Um, on that cloud native community side and we have like an interlock with our team on that so uh, welcome Cassandra and uh, she's on the who's new and I won't forget about that she's just signed up as well so that looks like something if you have the chance check it out that is cool all right and the last piece is another community event still Kubernetes uh, people involved. Adam from Pure and then Jeff, uh, the notorious KGG, are talking an introduction session on Kubernetes storage. So this is really going to be interesting because, you know, I, you know, what do you think, Maddie? But I think that Kubernetes is one of those things that it's a whole different platform, but in the end there's compute storage memory network and applications. It's just refactored differently. I think this will help close the gap for a lot of people. 
Yes, and uh, I'm pretty sure this is going to be very interesting. I know Adam has a lot of experience with uh, storage and containers so and cloud native in general. So I'm really looking forward to hear as well his perspective. Uh, we know Pure Storage is one of our partners as well. So uh, yeah, this event is going to be uh, next Thursday. Um, yeah, that's Thursday. Yep. On the 23rd of uh, February. So yeah, join us at Kubernetes Corner. You still have time to uh, register for this event. Yeah, indeed. So I think these will be um, good to check out. And just like some of the other ones, they'll go on the, wh what's the name of the YouTube playlist? Veeam Community uh, Events? Community Hub Events, yes. Hub Events, yeah, there we go. Yes, so we got a yes. dedicated playlist for that. So thank you, Jeff and Adam, for leading that. All right, I'm not going to forget who's new, yes. and I skipped <laughs> wow, it last week. Look yeah. at this. I know. Well, part of it is that during the launch event, I snuck it in, and we had a lot of joiners here. I mean, who? I mean, there's a lot of cool names in here. You got to look close, but I, I, I like uh, let's see, Hyper Up Converged was cool. Uh, Cassandra joined. Uh, I saw her in there. I don't know if I could still find her, but Cassandra Fair, there she is right there. Um, big welcome to not 200, but 199 of you uh -huh. who uh, have joined since I did skip it last week. But, you know, if you skim through some of those usernames, you'll see there are a cool uh, list here. We got my favorites, our favorites in the team were Over Easy, That Man, Hyper Up Converge, Jump Jack Flash, Pep Town. Pep Town, that's a that makes sense for a, a US city in, in Massachusetts. And because I can always see the email and it, it like puts it together, but Pep Town I thought was cool. We should ask Pep Town if he's from Massachusetts. Oh, I know he is, uh, or oh, she. Okay. I, I, I actually I didn't look too close because it's actually just to tell everybody how did how did Who's New get born? How, how does that start? Well, what I always do is when I look through our community hub i look at all the new people who come in i actually just want to see what's happening um i'm looking for you know are there friendlies it, it was initially like did the vanguards sign up did uh, some of our employees sign up because they need some additional access to some things that we don't share publicly and it was actually just really interesting to see what comes in it's like checking the mail right and every now and then you would see some funny usernames and so that's where the who's new came from and um but there was a special one for valentine's day that came in this week and it, some of you may have seen it and maddie and sophia and i all agreed best new username ever for valentine's day was love Three Veeam, or I gotta think this out. Love three Veeam, love. No, no, it's love. That's an oh, e, e reverse. Yeah, it's ah, a reverse E. Yeah, love Veeam. Yeah, that's a pretty I was, good I was thinking, one. Are you stu stuck on version three? No, no, no. He or she. <laughs> that was just an E backwards. That is the coolest of cool usernames we've ever. Is seen, this so. an employee or is no? Like that, a, was no a, that was a. That was a. Uh, just a member, right? Okay. I, I, don't, I didn't look too closely to see is it a partner, is it a uh, customer? I didn't. I'm not creepy with this. But <laughs> <laughs> no, Let's that give was... him him her a shout out for that. It's a really yeah. great uh, name. <laughs> it was nickname. Yeah, we <laughs> absolutely. Love that. Yeah. So, uh, Maddie, thank you so much for putting this content together, and uh, yeah, because we have a lot to share here today. Hopefully, everyone can go forth and do good stuff with V12. Absolutely. Uh, it, it's really been uh, great to go over the content from the last week. I feel like it was even more than usual and really good. Everyone kind of contributed in their own way. So really appreciate that. Thank you, community, for that. Yeah, the community makes it work here, everyone. I mean, so I, Maddie and Sophia do so much work to curate all this. And then when it comes to what we're sharing, yeah, sure. I mean, a couple of the posts came from our employees, but the engagement, the other parts, these these kind of events that even go beyond you know, all this stuff that exactly. goes in the community. Uh, we're so lucky here to have such a strong community. And uh, that's why at the launch event, you know, I had Alfred on the jacket and I draw I drew everyone's attention to the community hub because it's it's built into what we do and it's important all the way from the top. You know, Danny 
uh, enables us to do this. Anand is a, is a fan of this as well. Our co-founders knew this as well. So uh, we're, we're in a real special place, but we couldn't be here without the audience that, that you all are watching this. Absolutely. Doing it, so. Good stuff. That's, that's the most important, the people that we have in here. They are passionate yeah. about this and they are basically putting all the work in there to make it uh, happen. Uh, yeah. I mean, we are doing, of course, a lot of things, but without them, it's just like. Honestly. I have a horrible, horrible example, Maddie. <laughs> There's no me in community, but there is a you. It's an us in there. Us. Oh, there's no S. That would be awesome if there was an S in yes. community. Oh, com plural, communities. There's an us in communities, but, exactly. oh, but then that does make the, there be a me. But you get what I'm trying to say. <laughs> sometimes, it, friends, I kind of come up with these jokes on the fly. They Sometimes they work great. Other times, not so well, much. We, we have to end it up in a positive note, right? So, yeah, it's... Yeah. It's all of us that make this community work. And Indeed. big thank you for that, all of you yeah. out there. All right, well, have a good weekend. Uh, we'll have to think about something different next weekend, Maddie, because I'm out of town, special, special out of town. But uh, have a great weekend, weekend, everyone, and we'll see you maybe next week. We might do a non-video episode. Uh, otherwise, we'll be back strong at 110.